I'm uh, very happy to be able to moderate this webinar. And first of all, I would like to um, say I'm, that we're really sorry, the little delay in which uh, the delay in which we are doing actual this actual webinar, but it's not easy to coordinate these six fantastic professionals we have here. So in this webinar, we are going to focus about the precision. Um, the precision is a, is a part of the season that every time that you face in my in my personal experience, I have many doubts every year, and it seems that never is going to end. And uh, this uh, these questions that we have in mind around the precision, also our students from FSI have a lot. They ask, uh, and you know, during the courses, uh, many questions about the precision, how to organize the precision uh, from the different point of view, from the point of view of the physiotherapist, the doctor, uh, the, the strain conditioning, the injury prevention, so many topics in the precision period. That's why we developed the uh, a previous webinar like two years ago that was focused in precision and now again we develop a new webinar about this topic and in this in this case uh, we have six different professionals all of them related with FSI top professional and uh, in this webinar the aim is try to cover uh, to discuss about the precision but with different point of views you know from the fitness coach strength conditioning health you know performance side doctor, physiotherapist. So we are going to cover, uh, you know, in more detail, more questions that uh, our students send to us and the people that is actually, you know, our viewers send to the chat. So let's enjoy and let's talk about uh, this very interesting topic. So I'm going to introduce you this, so these six professionals that are with us today. So the first one I'm going to introduce to Bruno, Bruno Maciotti. So Bruno is a good friend, he's a PhD, Master in Biomechanics uh, and Sports Science and actually is Head of Health Performance in the, in the National Team Uruguay and uh, also is the Head of Health in the Real Valladolid and Crusader. So Bruno, it's a pleasure to have you here, mate. How are you? Rado, thank you so much to be part of this group, select group, you know. Uh, for me, it's a very, 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 very happy to be here. And I want to say hello for everybody watching us. And uh, I hope so in the end of the, the webinar, we can help the, the people make to sex some doubts about the precision test. So let's, let's advance. Uh, here also we have uh, another excellent professional. It's Matt Reeves. Matt uh, is actually, obviously... Uh, is head of uh, fitness and conditioning, Leicester. Um, it's also related with FSI. So Matt, I'm very happy to have you here, mate. The sound of- it's, uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for the invite. I think uh, you picked a, a very interesting topic, something that none of us have all the answers about, but Everyone will do things in slightly different ways and, and hopefully we can all share maybe what's right for us or, or the teams in which we're, we may be associated with. Um, but it'll be very interesting for everyone. Thanks, Matt. And uh, also I, I want to introduce you. The next one is Javi, Javi Mayo, uh, PhD in sports science and former fitness coach in Real Madrid, also Manchester City, Atletico de Madrid. Madrid. Real Madrid, we were Real Madrid. teammates. So I know him very well, not only professional, but also personally. He's a top guy. Javi, it's a pleasure to have you here. Hello. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a really big pleasure to be with you uh, this afternoon or this morning, whatever you are watching this, this webinar. And I think it will be a really nice time have, having together people from different countries, different leagues, and also students from different countries and different leagues and different contexts. So it will be really nice to put, thing, put things together. Thanks, Javi. And uh, the next one is Jesus, Dr. Jesus Olmo. He's also co-founder of FSI and uh, former Real Madrid, head of medical services in Real Madrid. Actually, is uh, medical director in uh, Isokinetic London. Uh, Jesus, thanks for being here. 
the sound. Yes, uh, sorry. Uh, I said, good afternoon from London. It's a pleasure to be here with, uh, with all of you, uh, surrounded by top guys like, like you and talking about one very dangerous moment for the team doctor's life, <laughs> which is precision, <laughs> precision and the injuries that we have in precision. So uh, very happy to talk about all this stuff. Okay, thanks Jesus. Okay, let's continue now with Barstov. Uh, he's the head of athletic performance at Legia Barso. Uh, Barstov is also, uh, you know, is part of the FSI family. Barstov, thanks a lot to be here. Thank you, thank you Bernardo, thank you to the, all the speakers and good afternoon to the, all our students. I'm happy to be here with you guys. We are right now before couple sessions with the team. So I hope this will be big enjoyment for all our students. And again, good afternoon. Thanks, Bastov. And uh, finally, Cristoforo, Cristoforo Filetti is actually is a researcher and also his fitness coach, uh, actually, and uh, in the previous year has been in several elite teams in Europe. Uh, he's going to be with us, but we know exactly that <laughs> approximately in 30 minutes he must to leave. <laughs> because of uh, his start to a training session in the evening. But thanks a lot, Christopher, to be here with us in this time. Thank you very much to everybody. Thanks, Bernie, for, uh, for to, uh, inviting me for this uh, very, very interesting webinar. Um, I will try to be, to be uh, with you all uh, as long as I can. Uh, and sorry, everyone, to, to, uh, to cut this, uh, this conversation, but we'll try the best. Thank you so much. You know, Chris, this is part of the, you know, this is pure direct and this is real life. And uh, we are talking about with high top professionals that I know exact the, the busy time that you have, you know, the busy schedule and sometimes it's practically impossible. So I'm very, um, in this way, I'm very grateful to have you here. So let's start, let's move on, on the first topic of this round table. Let's focus in the phase before start the precision, uh, the off-season period. That in my experience in the last years, I think more and more, we put more the focus also in the off-season period. So how is your actual opinion about the off-season periods? What do you think? What, what's your, your experience on this period actually? Okay, maybe I can start. Uh, just a reflection. Uh, Football is a more and more individual sport. Uh, players prepare themselves with the personal teams, not only to compete uh, against other teams, but to, to compete with their other fellows to play because they need to play in order to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to, to gain, to, to earn money for not, all, not themselves, but their own companies because at the end, big players are big companies. So I think that more and more we're seeing that the that the, the off-season period is not a period that the, all the players go and relax and don't do anything. Um, I think that more and more players are uh, preparing themselves for being as, as fit as possible in the precision. Because in the precision, they will, obviously, if, if, the, if the coach is new, for example, uh, in the precision is the time to, to prove themselves to play next season. So, I think uh, everything that uh, we can consider only in, in off season and only precision should be individualized. This is my my thing, my thought right now. Something yeah. someone want to? Okay, Matt. Sound, Matt. Um, absolutely, I'd uh, completely agree with that. Um, I think in the past, players viewed it as an off season, like you say. But I think now it is really just a closed season with no competition games, but the players continue to work. I think very important for a psychological reset, for a refresh um, from games and hard training, but time to see the family, to go on holiday and things like this. Um, so, of course, we don't expect the players to train every day, not for 90 minutes every day and things like this. But certainly, I believe we expect and also the players want to 
um, work throughout this five or six week period of the closed season, increasing intensity, duration and, and frequency of their exercise. But like you mentioned there, this can be individual. So maybe if we have young players that are breaking into the first team for the first time, they may need additional strength or hypertrophy work to, to make the step up to that, that new level of, of training. Um, and, and also other players that, that want to focus on, on different elements. But for us as practitioners, it, it can be challenging. You're working with players that are in all over the world in different places. Some are maybe working in hotel gyms. Some are working on the road, running. Some want to put their boots on and, and go and train on grass. So, so we have to adapt. We have to work with the players and, and understand their needs. But um, it's, it's a good opportunity to work and, and prepare ready for pre-season when they all come back together in one place. Yes, in this way, Javi wanted to add something. Uh, yes, I think we have to also put into context the team or the country or the calendar of the competitions we are working with, because there are certain competitions, like imagine the MLS, I'm thinking about it, that if you are not in the playoffs, probably can have two, three months of off season, as it happens in the NBA, where it's more, you have a very long four or five months off season. So in that case, you can do a lot of work outside your, your club with, with the player. But we also have to move into some European teams, which it happens the opposite, especially the years that there are international tournaments. And if your national team goes to the semi-final or, or the final, you almost get, in, in our case at Real Madrid, there were years that players had only three weeks of holidays. In mind your team, national team, like France in the last World Cup, Croatia, they only had three, three weeks off the players before getting back to the team. So it's very important to relate our off-season to the level of the players or the, our calendar of competition or even the age of the players. So we have to adapt that off-season to where we are working at, at, in, in every situation. Okay, so it's like Matt was, you know, explaining. Uh, and in this way, Barstow, do you want to add something? Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to jump in what Yavi said about the calendar because there is, depending on the league, sometimes you are finishing the season and you just don't have too much time to relax and charge your batteries for, for other activities. For example, with our team, we just had 16 days off between the end of the season and starting the preseason. So from us, it was the key to send the players mentally reset with some small activities to rebust their uh, energy to pre-season because we had hard season, we have a lot of games and we really wanted that they will go and come back fresh and with no injuries. And this was for us the focus. And I think we'll discuss this a little bit later, but also the players that had injuries, we have extra time to work with. So we also spent with the injured players this time to give them possibility to start the preseason with us. Yeah. Uh, something more to add, Christopher? Yeah. Or... Yes, yes. I, uh, well, I, I think, I think uh, uh, the key uh, might be what the doctor says at, at the beginning. Uh, in my experience, uh, uh, in the last in the last years, we tried to change a little bit some some direction about that, uh, trying to uh, to to use the off season as a uh, a period that can give us the opportunity to gain in some in some direction. So uh, I think um, the reflection we we, we were doing, uh, I'm not saying that is the, the true, but uh, only something that we we, we tried. Um, Going the direction of the of the uh, maximum strength in the off season maybe can help because it's the only period of the season that can uh, give the opportunity to, to recover well, to work with the, of course with the exercise that are uh, really really uh, uh, inside the, the the way of training of the players. But uh, uh, I think it's the only period we can use, especially when we are in the direction of the. Uh, the, the game of the three days, so we 
to, uh, to arrive to, to, to give some different uh, uh, stimulus of the players to the players that uh, can uh, cannot be done in, uh, in, um, in inside the season or in all the other period of the season. So this is what we um, we saw and we try to do. Uh, um, I think I think some players, especially of course players that uh, as enough recovery, so in the period at least four weeks uh, between the two seasons, uh, can work in that period to 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 gain this kind of uh, of different stimulation that can be. Uh, we have big difficulties in, inside the season to to work. So this is the reflection. One of the topics that might be uh, used in, in this kind of uh, in this kind of, um, of period of the season that uh, really is uh, uh, the only period that can give the the, the recovery that is uh, that is uh, uh, very very important to work in the direction of the maximum strength. Yeah, it can be. Uh, um, so, in my opinion, you gave a lot of different points, uh, you know, um, I think, our, I'm sure our viewers, our students are really clever. And uh, so, for sure, they took many, many insights, you know, many, many points that you gave, uh, all of you. Because if we have different topics, so let's, let's advance. Uh, let's move to the next um, topic. I don't know, Bruno, if you want to add something or we advance to the second. Um, in this way, I don't know if the connection is very good, is Bruno. But okay, let's advance to the, let's move on to the second topic because of, we have many. So we have been focused uh, previously in the off season. Now, let's go, let's do it to the pre-season. Okay, start the pre-season. And what would be, in your opinion, the main actions to do in the first two, three days? Because of, I know this for our students generate many you know, many doubts and questions. So what's happening in the first two, three days when the players come to the, to the training facilities? You I can start, start whenever you want. I can start if you want. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, what, in, in the first two, three days, uh, I think the, the experience uh, drive us to, to use a safe approach. So uh, we don't know what exactly the player uh, done in the period uh, in the in the off season. So, uh, for example, going to the practice. Uh, I mean, um, we avoid uh, the number. Of, we control as much as we can uh, in the first two three days all the activities that uh, can be dangerous for the players. So we limited that uh, limit to zero the the shoot. For example, we. We try to to control the center contraction. We try to uh, to do all the things that are that might be dangerous because we don't know what the player had done before. So uh, I think the the safe approach can be can be should be the, the the approach we have to use in this kind in these two or three days of the beginning of the season. Okay. Um, yeah. Another thing is testing. Two or three days, uh, uh, as we have said, we don't know, as you have said, Christopher, uh, we don't know how uh, the players are doing, uh, have, been made, have been doing in the preseason. It depends on the age, it depends on many factors, a lot of variability. So it's a good thing to have some testing, to check how, how the players are, every one of them. And so we can add... At, 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 at as much as possible, individualize the work. Um, uh, this is for me is one thing. Another thing is, is I agree with you. Uh, all in, the, in the first days, uh, you, we couldn't, we cannot uh, be very risky in applying mostly eccentric load, mostly high acceleration loads, uh, HDPS, uh, uh, acceleration, acceleration uh, vectors. Um, uh, it's, it's a very safe, very safe approach for sure. Uh, until we have an idea of each player, uh, how is uh, in terms of, of everything. And, and, and of course, we need to build the, the chronic load. Uh, we don't know what is the chronic load of each player. No? Yes. So it's, prudency is a very nice thing. Uh, I would say, I would ask, testing is another, another question. Sure. <laughs> sure, for sure. Yeah. Yes, I will add also, because I also think that the, the most important thing of those days is the 
start and develop the team adaptation or the player adaptation to the training. And in my opinion, following what Jesus said about the testing on these first days, for more um, a training point of view on the field, uh, I think that for a, for, for a general guideline, guideline for coaches, I think that the first micro cycle, instead of doing a seven day week, I think it's better to start training midweek, like just to do on the first week, on the first mi micro cycle, two or three days on the field, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, give Sunday on, off, and then start working on the second week. So be or be sure that on, we don't go very high on the on the training loads on the first week, because if we start on, on a Monday from, from players coming from different uh, holidays, different countries, different different kind of training of seasons, and we start on a Monday and we build up a seven days week training, it's very hard for players and that uh, it, it takes, uh, uh, you get a, a high risk of injuries. And many times, uh, us as fitness coaches, okay, we can control the load, but Many times it, it, they are the coaches, the, the head coach who's taking charge and the, and the players, they come from the off season. Everybody wants to train and they feel fresh. So it's very time as we cannot um, like manage all the training load. The best thing is cut the week. So to make sure that the coach doesn't go very high on, on the load. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's really interesting that you've said that and it's a, a lovely way to to structure the week, because I agree. Um, it, although we're talking about the first two or three days, I always find that by the fourth day, that is when the, the players are, are maybe feeling really tired, the muscle soreness is high, the fatigue is setting in. And so structuring the week, like you say there, Javi, is, is a good way of controlling that. Um, certainly in the first two or three days, it's important to test, like like we mentioned, and I'm sure that's a an important topic we'll we'll cover in this. Um, but it's about finding out where the players are at, how they are, and and reintroducing them to to ball work, putting the football boots on the the grass. And and personally, I I love the first few days of preseason. Maybe the players don't because they have to work very hard. But as a fitness coach, I think it's great. We've had some time off. Everyone comes back together. We're all excited. As you say, everyone wants to train hard and, and, and give their all. And so it's an exciting period where we as practitioners just need to, to manage the, the loads um, without being too soft, without um, applying too much cotton wool. We need to push them, but in the correct ways, like you mentioned, Christoph, early on. Um, how, can we, how can we do this safely to progress the players through? Because... If somebody gets injured early on in pre-season, everything is wasted. The, this is the worst thing. They put in hard work and then get injured uh, and they lose all that initial load and, and chronic load they've built up or, or fitness improvement. So it's a challenge, but an exciting challenge for us. Yeah, totally agree. I, in this way, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, everyone, maybe Barstow, uh, Bruno, that now I think he hears, um, What's your opinion in the last year when you received the players in the first two, three days? Um, do you have the feeling, the, the experience that sometimes you receive the players more and more similar that when, you know, in the similar state that when they went uh, in, the, in, the, in the season, at the end of the season? So obviously it's a great individual variability, but what's your opinion about the state in general? What's your opinion? Uh, how the players just rave after the the, the precision a, a normal precision so first of all we need to definitely put into different ways two kind of or two types of the players first of all if we got the players that was working with us previous season uh -huh. and we know them already and new players if they coming to the team and we don't know them so this is two ways of of working with them but working of them and knowing them because if we know what the players was doing during off season and we have somehow insight, we know what we can expect. But the players that are coming from new environment, new club, and they're joining the team, they will also need the time to adapt of style of the coaching, new team, new teammates, having the new emotionals also during those days. So this is important how we approach them. 
but based on the also the time, how long they was off the club, we can see from our perspective, if we, they are two, three weeks out and they was doing a little bit, there is not much decrease in their performance comparing to the end of the preseason. And we can already check this during the testing that all of us already discussed. Yeah, exactly. And I think also the experience from other coaches will be very interesting to, to, to hear because from my point of view, if the players are well controlled, well aware and self-aware about the off-season, they also coming in the quite good shape to work on. Mm. And from our perspective, we need to be careful to not damage them with the introduction of the high load in the fast time. Exactly. Oh, but it's Bruno. interesting, if I can say something, it's interesting the idea of math. Uh, when players come, they are very enthusiastic, they get fresh, they want to impress the, the, the coach. So first two, three days, normally it's difficult to control the intensity. But on the other hand, it's a, it's a, big, it's a big load in the first days. And I have, as you have seen, you have, uh, you have seen, and it's also something I have I've seen, uh, Four, three, uh, the two, in the four, fifth day, there is danger there because uh, we have accumulated two or three days of uh, two of high intensity, maybe higher than we expect, and uh, and this is a, a good a good tip to remember that by the fourth or fifth day of the precision, maybe we can consider uh, uh, lower the load or, or check in or be especially careful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I try I to. Know, Bruno, to... do you want exactly, Bruno? I hear you. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, it's good because the last one you can hear everybody and uh, to learn with this this kind of webinar. Uh, but is we be a part of the team, you know? Probably in the first week we have to to maybe convince the coach how the way we manage the load sometimes, you know. Especially if you have a new coach in your club. You know, I want to show something different. Yeah, put the play and the pressure on the player to, to be there. Or new players like uh, Boros uh, talk about this. In the end, if you try to have a good connection in your technical staff, maybe you can have a chance to manage the load of the players. You know, especially for the players that got the injuries the, the last season. That's the fair point for me. Because if you don't understand where, where we, we stay or where we are working, Probably we, we, we don't know where we go. That's the, the, the problem here. You know, so my, my experience, for example, I try to start to convince or show uh, the plan, the microcycle with the players to show to the staff, the coach. And after this, I started to share the decision with the player because in the end, we have to show the, the players how your plan and how we'll be there. That's for me the, the, the fair point. And after this, we talk about, for, okay, loads. Uh, and the high uh, overload or maybe the, the prevention work that's everything to be in the context I, I can't work with the players if I don't convince my my coach that's for me the, the fair play if the player had the opportunity to work in the off season of course it's, it's good but the, depending on the kind of work he did and uh, who is did with the, play, the, the work with the player because in the end maybe we don't have to change with the personal I think, uh, I think uh, if everything to be in the context, have the chance to share with the no. even the coach no. or maybe the personal uh, coach, maybe we'll have a chance to, to be on the precision and good period. Okay, for me, it's fantastic. Uh, listen, you, you know, I'm, uh, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> there are many points of view, and it's fantastic, really. Uh, I think the viewers right. must be enjoying because of this conversation uh this discussion is absolutely fantastic okay let's move on to the next topic because we have um we are a little yeah. late, you know delay with the little delay so the next topic is uh, okay uh, let's move in the in the area of injuries um we know that low exposure is one of the main headaches you know and prevention injuries during the precision as matt said uh or bastov was uh, also commenting uh, injuries 
in the precision is of prevention of injuries during the precision is one of the our main headache you know during all this period of time so what is in your experience in respect of injury prevention what are the main uh, i have two questions here for once in one side which is your uh, experience in respect of injury incidents in precision if we look back and uh, which will be the main physical complaints that uh, you normally find during the precision so uh, i'm very because i received some questions from a student that really go one that we go deep in injuries during precision I start Ben because after I have to leave. Uh, sorry for, for that. Uh, no, I, I, I think about this topic. It's very very important to study uh, the players we have and to find to um, to try to find a a, a, um, a direction in in each in each player and to try to install the the, the prevention work individually individualizing as much as possible, taking into consideration the historical of the player and uh, um, the age of the player of course we have to be able to to know all about the player to to, to start to speak about uh, um, about injury prevention about prevention as 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 an important topic to to add the player to 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 start well the, to well start the season so i think i think the the most important thing is to study what we are with the player we don't know especially and uh, try to to give them the possibility to to uh, to have uh, like like a new uh, point of view about uh, how they can start to 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 work about the prevention uh, then i think i think this might, might be the, the most important focus to to install uh, at the beginning of the season um, other things that might in my opinion might be very 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 important uh, is is uh, to 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 understand uh, how we can merge the, the training session and the, the prevention work. So it's very important, especially in the, at the beginning of the season, uh, what the player does with the keep with that with the team and what the player uh, can do with the with the the individually and try try to to find the right direction because uh, I think uh, as some of you have said before. Uh, the start of the season is uh, uh, the way to to let the player know how and where we want to go. So uh, this might be um, this is my my point of view. Okay, thanks, Cristoforo. And uh, I know you must leave. So yes, sorry about that. <laughs> we see you. We see you in the next. You know, in our conference for sure. Yes. Next conference. In, in Thank October. you so much to everyone. Well, sorry. Uh, Ciao, Chris. Muchas gracias a todos. Chao, chao, chao. Chao, chao. Chao, chao. Chao. And Bernardo, uh, I want you just to, to, to maybe to talk about the fair point. For me, this is a prevention work or prevention injury. We're talking about the screening. If we have to, to have a chance to do the, the right screening, and when I talk about the right screening, it's about to, to monitor your players all the season. You know, if I want to, to, to test my players in the beginning, or pre-season, I have to reply or maybe apply again and again and again all the tests again during the season. That's the way I found I found to to try to make prevention for my players and uh, how much I can test my players. But when I when I talk about the the tests, it's about the sensitive tests. You know, like uh, which kind of tests I use. The test is for for who, for me or for the players, and that's the the, the point. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try. To resume in, in, during the season, and maybe in three or four tests, in neuromuscular tests, maybe about for the champions and about for isoprone tests, try to to make sense for the player also. Because in the end, if the the player not engage for the test, we, we can't to to provide for the good uh, screening. And if I can't provide the good screening, I can't provide to the prevention work. Absolutely, absolutely. If I can add a little bit from yeah, okay. from this about the injuries. I, in the first period, the key is communication. So the pillars that we put, the communication not only with the head coach, but also with the physios and strength conditioning coaches, because everybody is precision, everybody excited. Let's do more, let's do fast. And, and this is the key point, how to, we can communicate to help the players and save them from the 
acute spike of the load that are not ready for. For example, if we wanted to build the injury prevention program in our team, we just put it three pillars. We add the load that is coming from the strain conditioning and football. We add the screening and the all tissue reaction based on the training and the daily checkups with the physios, how the players react day by day for the certain intervention that we made as a staff for them. And this give, give us, first of all, a little bit safety umbrella for the players because we know how they react for certain movements, certain interventions, certain even technical work, and then just build with that step by step, week by week through the season. And I don't know what's your opinion, but many teams are not ready for just for the first game in the season. They are prepared for the first game, but uh, they are going game by game, increase their performance. From statistical yeah. point of view, for from from our team, we are fourth and fifth game. We starting to be on the build up of the peak of the performance that will keep the first season. But to the first season to be in the peak shape, I think it's 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 good to, good to discuss from our experts. Do they have that? They had the tips that we was ready for the first game immediately after four weeks of preparation. I don't know if it's uh, happy. Yeah, I also think that the preseason, or those first days of preseason, are very important from a point of view of the coach education, from the, the football coaches. Because many times, as fitness coaches, we can do as many uh, screening and, and preventive routines or exercises. But at the end of the day, most of the training is related to the ball. And when you go from holidays into training with the ball, and you start doing passing drills, a player touches the ball 100, 200 times in a training session, and then you go into possessions, small-sided games, shooting, and that, in my opinion, especially not only for the first thing, but from the academy point of view, you start getting lots of uh, groin injuries, muscle, muscle groin injuries, quads injuries, ankle injuries because of the, of the small-sided games. And interesting, you don't get so many hamstrings, injuries in preseason, because most of the space, most of the things are in a small oh, space. Yes. So we go too early into a small, into things, into drills that the players are not prepared for, prepared to. And that many times it's not about what we do as fitness coaches, it was the coaches do. So I think it's very important the education of the coach. When to use each drill during the preseason. Yeah, it's, it's like the Bruno was. It's, I'm sorry, uh, intervention is a very complex, as we all know. Multifactorial, very complex. We know from the statistics that we have a peak of injuries at the beginning of the season. Not in pre-season, not only pre-season, but in the beginning of the season. Uh, we have a peak there and also another peak uh, in the middle season, more or less. We know that for statistics. This is a statistic. This is the way it is. Um, so something something we are doing that is increasing this first peak of, of injuries. We have three things in prevention, basically. One is the individual predisposition that can be screened and can be worked, okay, individually. Second is the training process, the load and recovery. And third is the exposition to football, because as you have said, Javi, football is risky. You need to be prepared to football. If not, you can have injuries. So you need, we need to, to develop a comprehensive uh, framework for these three things. So it's important screening. It's important to work individually in the biomechanical individual factors of the players. Then it's, it's important to control the load. But it's not only the load. It's not, not only the load is not the only important thing. We need the load, the recovery process, and Last, we have, we need to control the progressive exposure of the player to football. Some things that sometimes is very difficult because you have pre-season games that in some clubs, there are even pressure to win these pre-season games or are more or less competitive because. So, as you have said, Javi, this uh, mix is difficult to, to manage and it must be in coordination for the, with the coach for sure. 
Okay, Matt. Yeah, I think um, we nowadays we have so much information available to us, uh, whether that's GPS monitors, heart rate monitors, screening data, um, that there's so much information. But sometimes, I think certainly in pre-season, because it is so unnatural, some of the loads that the players are exposed to, if if somebody had been injured for, for four or five weeks um, and then coming back, I think it would be unusual that we would put that injured player into the very high loads that, that these same squad of players go through early on in pre-season after the, the close season. Now, we need to develop maybe a little bit of feel. Some of it is the smell of the, the manager, the, the practitioners, the doctor, the, the fitness coaches, everyone watches training, speaks to the players, understands how they're coping on an individual level. Um, and I think it's very important, like a number of the, the kind of experts here have, have mentioned, what did the players do yesterday? What are we expecting them to do today? And do we think that's appropriate? Do we need to modify that in any way? Um, having mentioned about hamstring injuries, maybe not being as high because the space is very small. So if if a number of the squad have tight hamstrings, do we modify the areas and make it smaller? Or or like you said there, if if lots of the players have have stiff or sore quads from lots of repetitive technical work, do we make sure we we reduce the amount of shooting that day or, or things like this? And so sometimes the the little decisions that are maybe made on feel um, are, are very important as well. Um, yeah, we need to obviously, hey, we can't cheat the process. And, and if we have real concerns over players, maybe unilateral tightness or stiffness, that might make us more aware or, or is a bigger risk. And so then the player has to be pulled out and, and modified totally. But it's, it's a real challenge. Uh, and certainly it's about getting the collective um, opinions of the multidisciplinary team, I think, is important. Totally. In this way, Javi wanted to add something. Or... Yeah, just to, just to make it clear, um, a little bit clear. Sometimes, uh, as coaches or generally, we, we we go from small sided games to big games, and probably in precision, we should do the opposite. We should start building bigger spaces because when you play in a bigger mm -hmm. space, the intensity is lower and the player touches the ball less times. And sometimes coaches do the opposite. They start pre-season in small spaces where players are exposed to many accelerations, deceleration, decelerations, contacts. And then it happens the opposite. When you go into a big, as Jesus said, when you go into competition, big space, your hamstring blows because you're not, you haven't been exposed to big distances. Yes. So sometimes okay. we have that combination. We go in the, coaches go in the, in, in the opposite direction when training. Okay. Would you have said in your experience as well, when you start in the small areas and the intensity is very high, it's often the player's legs that get tired quickly. And so actually it's their legs or their ability to, to produce the power that goes first. And then the heart rate response drops as well. And so then you don't improve fitness or intensity because they can't cope. Yeah. And you lose the coordination also. Yeah. And that develops into ankle injuries, knee injuries. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. You're being um, uh, over. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. It's a good point. It's a good point. And it's, it's, it's peculiar of football because in other sports, you always start with high volumes and low speeds. And in football, you start with, uh, with little volumes and, and, and high speeds. So. Yeah, but no. in this way, you are giving a lot of insight. So I would like to join with the next topic because at the end we are talking around is that yeah, uh, the next topic was uh, uh, about the individual. Bernard, can I just to, to finish with the, this topic? Yeah, because of it's very interesting uh, to talk yeah, about yeah. what to talk about. Uh, I had opportunity to, to live in different contexts, you know, the different clubs and Premier League and uh, French League, Italian League. And now, example, I share my work with in Brazil and the Spain. Example, in Brazil, normally you have a, normally between 14 days to pre-season. And during this 65 games, 
65 games. You know, so many density, the, the calendar of the Brazil, and the precision time is, is a little bit less, 14 days. And that's why I, I, I want to say that, because we, we, we don't have just only way to do the things, you know? <laughs> that's the way. Maybe you have to adapt the culture, maybe to have to adapt to the coach, uh, which kind of players we have. If you have to have players, robust players, like they have a good, good profile, this is a situation where to, you have to communicate a lot. Maybe, maybe the main thing that we have to do the players around the profile, around the screening, around the load, is to understand where we are, you know? This is, for me, is a very important to, to understand exactly uh, who is the team have the proper remark, chance to be injury or not. Uh, the last season, what happened with the club, the club go the second division or not. This is something some that changed a lot. Example, in Valladolid, when I started to work with them, they are got in the second division. Of course, in the new coach, you want to improve a lot in the first part of the, the season. That's and I, I'm agree with the doctor Jesus because he said the first part of the season, almost almost in the, the during the three months, the beginning of the season, we had a six, 70% in the hour injury, in totally hour injury in the last in the last season. That's a, when the things start to be more equalized the, normally, and that's we had the chance to to apply what we believe. But just, I want you just to, to bring this point because if you don't understand where we are, probably we have a chance to be committed like a lot, a lot of mistakes. Totally, Bruno. Uh, really, I, I really, I repeat again, but I'm really happy about you. You are giving a lot of point of view, a lot of real, real, real knowledge. And in this way, I wanted to, to add the news, the next uh, topic is, is it possible individualization in this in the during the precision like bruno was telling us you know is it possible to individualize the load to each one uh during precision this is one of my main problems in precision you know try to adjust individually the stimulus so i don't know what you think about bartos of uh whatever you you want let's go on Yeah, Matt. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind going. Um, I think it's a, it's a very good question. I think it's an important factor. Um, as we know, um, like has been mentioned before, the injury risk and the baggage that the, the players come with, previous injury history, their age, all these different factors are, are very important. And so sometimes certain players need to be managed in different ways. Practically, how do we do that? Um, maybe if there are conditioning drills at the beginning of a session, maybe certain players don't participate in that five or 10 minutes of conditioning drill, but instead do some mobility or injury prevention work during that phase just to reduce the loads. And then for them, you wait until the end of training to decide whether they feel in a good place to complete it once all the football work is done. Um, there could be individuals that, that don't complete double sessions every day. Uh, maybe they do a double, then a single, then a double, then a single to, to manage their load or, or modify it, whether they're load compromised from tendons or, or anything like that. And I guess the other aspect that I sometimes think about is, although we talk about small-sided games and 5v5s and 6v6s, they're very intense for every player in the team. The minute we start working on big pitches and in tactical work, I think actually the workload does become individualized because all of a sudden the, the central defenders are playing as central defenders and their distances are lower, like would be expected when they come into competition. And, and yes, the central midfielders may cover a lot of distance or, or the fullbacks a lot of high speed, but this is what they need to prepare for individually ready for competition as well. So I think the more that the, the training, the drills can look like the game itself, I guess you start to see some individualization within that. Okay. I, I agree, right. Bernardo. I agree 100% with Matt because I think, generally speaking, let's say in professional football, during the preseason, we have this 
like the first half of the prison, which is like more generic, where the coach is more receptive to what uh, the medical, the fitness coach say. But as we get closer to the when the, to the competition, to the league, uh, managers they uh, start to go more specific, which on the one hand, um, it's you individualize the load as, as Matt said because players play more in their positions or they are more friendly games. But at the same time, <coughs> the play the coach wants the player to work on uh, the collective the dynamics of the team. <coughs> so in that case, it's difficult for to take players off the training because now the as we all know uh, managers or head coaches are in risk uh, they, they don't have a, a job stability so many times uh, the balance between injury and performance is difficult is difficult to to, to get the, the right balance because uh, as the prison finishes the managers they start to uh, select their they have their own idea of the players who are going to be important for the first games and they start overloading, not on, not physical, but from a tactical point of view, those players. So I think it's very important that coordination and the trust between the manager or the management staff and the medical staff to balance the, the workloads. But I think that's very important that the manager, because sometimes managers go into a team and, and after two, three months, it, they are sacked. And the, the people who are more <laughs> good, coaches, uh, physios, medic, doctors, the medical staff. Great. I don't know if someone wants to add something about. It's okay. Okay. Now let's move to some questions that we have been receiving from our students. Uh, some of them are, from, or some of them are really interesting. Some of them have been covered because the questions we 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 did was you know were based on the students' suggestion. So I'm going to review some of them. Um, so I let's try to cover. Not all, because we have many. So let's uh, let's cover three questions, no more. But uh, I think can be can complete, you know, this uh, webinar. For example, we have here a question uh, from uh, Kate Muller, again about the precision, uh, again about the test, because it's a topic that is very very interesting for our viewers. Is which test exactly do you do in the first days of precision, and how do you divide? between fitness coach and physiotherapist reliability so how we manage between the being with the people around in the different in the staff so another time coming back to test yeah, yeah. in my in my experience example bernard uh, maybe i have the answer for the question i try to apply the test to maybe the the during the the season also you know, like a monitoring mm -hmm. test. If I, I if I have a test in the preseason, I have to repeat during the season to to understand uh, what the the behavior of the curve the player have during the season. You know, example we're talking about for isoprene test. For me, is a good test for to try to analyze for the isometric power and special special for the hamstring. You know, uh, anaerobic probability test. You, you can hear the capacity for the test on the pitch. This is for me the good information also what I can take and. They talk about for the uh, maybe the counter movement jumps. Depends on what you have in your club. Depends on what you have in your club. But the ba we never forget the basic. If you have a good, good historical injury for the player, you have a lot of information to apply in the prevention work during the next season. You know, okay. I, we came to talk about this uh, a lot of the device, a lot of technology. If you don't go to the, come back to the basic, and the basic for me, and uh, to understand the which profile the players you have in your team. Yeah, I totally agree. Something to add about the test? Uh, something? Or we go to another? To another? Yeah, I think I, I agree with you there, Bruno. Um, every club will be different. What is available to you? What the culture is? And, and so that's a really key question to ask yourself is, is why is the test important? What is it going to influence? How do we change decision making based on that test? Uh, and like you say, when can we then retest? Because if if we're testing something because we we think it's important or we think people say we should be doing it and that's the only reason, then then that's not good enough. It it needs to impact what we do. Um, and so probably, in my opinion, you want a quite a succinct. Uh, a compact testing battery 
that influences what you do and, and maybe informs you about where the player is at the moment compared to last season or previously, where the players are at compared to each other. And then also it gives you baselines for future development or return after injury. Great. I have a, another question. I don't know. Um, from uh, Christina, the physiotherapist from Flora, you know, Estonian uh, club. And uh, she uh, asked, how long will be the ideal for you, uh, the time between study precision and the first friendly match? <laughs> this is a question that normally we don't have time to, to decide, you know? Uh, it comes from us, you know, in post. <laughs> But uh, how, how long will be? We, we, we don't decide about this. <laughs> I don't think that. Everything based on the head coach decision when he wants to play the first game and see the players on the pitch in the complex environment with the whole squad. Or... And uh, what she, she asked, uh, how will be the ideal, uh, your, your consideration, in your opinion, how will be the ideal time between start precision and the, the first friendly game? Yes. Just to give an, an idea, for me, I will wait until the end of the second week. And the most important thing is I will try to arrange that game against a lower league team. So we do, and play 45 minutes each player. So just to be two weeks, 45 minutes per player, lower, lower competitive game. Just to get 45 minutes of easy football. And then from then, progressing time, progressing quality of the, of the, of the rivals. Okay, great. Uh, someone yeah, to I, I agree with you, Javi, but uh, I, I really, really, I don't know this answer, really, really. You know, because <laughs> they pay a lot of <laughs> I totally agree. I prefer to, to go in the right way, like Javi said, but uh, I had the opportunity to, to work with the clubs. Then after three days, start to play uh, football, and uh, it's crazy. It was crazy season, but this, that's the decision of, of coming from the coach. That's the problem. Or exactly. maybe it's the right You know, we try to adapt. No, you yeah. you remember in the old times uh, the the teams used to go to the mountains and play against the against third division teams in the in the local. Uh, in the big clubs, it is it's not this uh, anymore. Uh, we have the first game maybe one week after we start the season, and it's a, a game against uh, when I was Real Madrid, a game against Manchester City, against Inter, against. <laughs> but it's a it's a friendly game, everything. But it's not so friendly game. So it's a challenge. It's a game. It's a challenge. Uh, ideal thing is what Javi says, of course. But yeah. Sometimes we need to adapt to, to the situation and the business. Uh, it's, it's business. Okay, let's move on uh, on the last question. Um, we have a student that asked that. Uh, can you tell about the relationship between the club and the personal? The personnel that works with the player outside of the club. Uh, as professional, do you agree with this kind of extra work? So this is another topic. Um, you know, players train off season, sometimes outside with someone, also during the preseason and during the season. So what do you think about the relationship between these professionals and the professionals inside the club during this period of time? Can I say something? Uh, for me, a very, 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 very brief, briefly. These uh, players training by themselves with their personal training teams is a fact. You can agree or disagree, but it's a fact. And it's, going, it's here to stay because it's, it's what is common in professional sports, for example, you, in the USA. And, and it's the way it is. And it's, uh, you must understand this because, as said, players compete between each other and they need to play. They need to be, to, they need to be prepared and need to compete to, to beat them who play, not the other not the other fellow. So I think it's something we must adapt to. And uh, in my opinion, I mean, in my experience, it's much better to have a good relationship uh, with the personal uh, environment of the, of, the, of the player. Uh, the better relationship, the better For the, for the performance of the player. This is my opinion. Yeah, I think that's important, like the communication between the guys at the club and that person that's working externally is, is so important because 
that individual isn't aware of the conversations that are happening in the club, what is going to happen the following day, whether the player is going to be playing in the next game and things like that. And so we need the communication to make sure that the best decisions can be made, like you say. Totally agree. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is a new world, you know, Bernardo? This is a new yeah. world. I have to accept this. Uh, we can find uh, a lot of good professionals who work around the clubs. This is a reality also. Of course, you have a, like a not so good professional, maybe disturbed uh, or not understand what happened inside the club. This is a problem. But like Matt said, it's a, a, the, the key of this is communication. Normally, what I, I try to do and try to apply in my reality, try to bring to the, the, the coach to talk to us, to understand what happened inside the club. And in the end, it's the benefit of coming in front of the players. You know, that's the reality. No, it's not the minor work you have to, to do. Maybe we have to do the right work. You know, to do the thing is a matter, but the, to do the right thing even more. That's the situation. If everybody understands this, probably the, the benefits come in front of the player. 100% agree. Um, okay, mates, really, we are, <laughs> we, we passed 10 minutes of the time, you know, we are one hour full. <laughs> um, so let's conclude the, this fantastic webinar. In my opinion, really, I'm very, very, like I said before, very happy to have you here. I learned a lot. I could be here three hours more, <laughs> but uh, uh, so it has been really fantastic to have you here. Uh, I hope you see you in our next conference in November and November, 30 November, 1, 2 of December in live, also in streaming, but I hope to see you in live. And uh, I don't know if you want something to add that uh, you had in mind or and then we can close the, the webinar. That's good. Thanks very much. Uh, Something? Nothing more? I would, I would like to stress what you said about the conference. Uh, we have been here uh, just talking a little bit about precision. And as you have said, uh, we would like to be here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so interesting because having all the, the, the point of view of people that are in the day by day of the club. So, uh, but the conference in Granada will be an excellent opportunity for all of us and also our students, our whole community to share these yeah. thoughts. I think uh, conferences for me is, uh, are the, one of the most valuable things in terms of education that you can have. Not only in terms of, the, of, of looking at the, at, the, at the presentations, but also talking with people. Yeah, completely agree. Oh. Completely agree. Okay, let's move on. Uh, thanks a lot to be here, Barso, Bruno, Jesus, Matt, Javi, and uh, Christopher that went before. Uh, you are top guy, and see you soon here. Okay, ciao. Bye, bye, fellows. Bye, 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 bye. 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 bye.